Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. Well, sure, you do. You, you have to, at, at some point, you have to leave the cave in the morning and go outside and kill something and drag it home and eat it, okay? We all understand that. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 116th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy, joined as always by Dave and Andre. What's up, guys? Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, well, you know, just being Dave. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, we, are brought to, we are brought to you again this week by Fiend Phone, and as always, room for freedom, even though there's still nothing there yet. Um, this week, we have a returning guest, our friend, uh, and the one of the co-hosts of the Radical Logic podcast, Mr. Merrick Van Landingham. Hey, Merrick. How's it going, brother? Hello, everyone. I am vertical, sir. How about yourself? Well, I'm... Um, Kind of vertical. I'm sitting. I should be vertical. I should be standing doing this. I keep saying I'm going to do it. I never do. But otherwise, I'm all right, man. It's good to have you back. We haven't uh, we haven't talked. Uh, like in a while. It's great. It's great to be back, and and it's always an honor to be on. And thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Well, you 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 know, it's you, an honor to just be able to get to talk to you, my friend. Oh, you too, brother. Yeah, man. We were all just, no, no homo. <laughs> no homo. Yeah, we, well, we were all we were all just discussing before the show that you know we, we even when, even when you guys get to see each other, you don't even get to talk because well, life gets in the way. So you know, these things happen. So it's it's nice to be able to sit down and have a chat every now and then. You know, catch up with one another and uh, toss some ideas around because you know that's what we're supposed to be about here. So we have Merrick back, and we were talking before the show. Uh, about some ideas about uh, entrepreneurship, which is something I'm obviously uh, a big, big proponent of. And uh, I've been an entrepreneur, I guess. And an ac- I'm an accidental entrepreneur, but I've been one for over a dozen years. And uh, since I'm currently in the process of shutting my business down and finally getting the hell out of New Yorkistan, uh, I'm looking to be starting something He's completely. finally escaping from New York. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking to start something new here. So this stuff is right up my alley. So yeah, man, why, uh, why don't you, uh, why don't you spit some knowledge at us and uh, see where it takes us? Well, I don't know so much about the knowledge other than maybe just observational things that I've been dealing with lately. Um, as you, you, you guys all know me on a personal basis. So you know that I'm, I've always got my fingers in different pies. and You got to. Well, sure, you do. You, you have to, at, at some point, you have to leave the cave in the morning and go outside and kill something and drag it home and eat it, okay? We all understand that. But what I'm watching is a lot of people, and these are people that I know, including family and friends, who are all coming to me with kind of, you know, that hat in your hand, uh, kind of scrubbing your toe, looking at your feet type thing and shame and going, hey, uh, I see what 
were doing there. You got any uh, like extra work for me, or you know, maybe throw me a little bone? Yeah. And it has sent me into a lot of conversations with these people about you know I don't want to I don't want to give you a fish. I want to teach you how to fish. And uh, boy, I'm starting off on some terrible cliches. <laughs> uh, uh, but. And, and so I've gone into a lot of these conversations about entrepreneurship and about, and about how to start a business and how to market and how to uh, talk to your clients and how to solicit business. And this is all very one-on-one stuff, but something stopped me dead in my tracks right in the middle of all of that. And that was me looking around and understanding all of the barriers to entry that are there now for an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. and not That's even a, a not even a straight up entrepreneur that wants to jump through all the, the governmental uh, hoops and regulations and taxes and and general liability policy that's going to cost you 500 bucks a year and you got to have this license and well should I be an LLC or a, a sub s or a c corp or what do I do about this and uh, you know, how do I pay that tax? Well, can I write that off? I mean, there's so many barriers, excuse me, barriers to entry uh, that I realize quickly that I'm talking to very young people who are very interested in being entrepreneurs, but are really stymied by the barriers. I, I, I'm not sure how to say it's it. It's a sorry lot of I'm things, too. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm stumbling with my words here, but it is a lot of things. It's the it's regulations, much more it's the the upfront costs. You know, the the, oh, the sure. banks won't give loans to people without sound capital coming in. You know, positive income streams. All these things, they just won't do it anymore. And well, sure. Well, how how do you get a loan? If you don't have well, angel you get a loan because it's like good luck. You yeah, if it, how do you get a loan, a small business loan? I've done this a million times over the years. How do you do it? Well, you show that you have assets. Well, how do you get assets? Well, by making money. Well, how do you make money? Well, you usually need a loan. I mean, this is the, the conundrum. It's like this circular thing that it's just, I, I just realized how hard it is to get started. Now, I've been at the game for a long time, and I guess maybe some of that's gotten lost on me over the years. But exactly what you said, Dave, that, you know, it... It, it's just difficult to, you know, to go to the bank with nothing and say, I need a hundred thousand dollars. And they say, what do you need it for? Well, I'm going to start up this business. Well, what do you have to, to, to bank on as collateral? Well, nothing at this point. And so, you know, once again, barrier to entry, those things are okay. But what really is, sticking in my craw are the other barriers to entry. As you guys very well know, you know, we started a, a beer business last year, mm -hmm, uh, yep. which is doing yep. very well. But do you have any idea how much red tape we had to cut through to, to get that done? I mean, just the beer license itself, nine <laughs> months. Wow. It's insanity. Nine months. And that's nine months of you sitting around waiting not to see money. if they <laughs> might just say no. They might very well after nine months go, ah, you know what? And this actually happened to somebody in the same city that we, that we started that, that business in. After nine months, they came back and said, you know what? You typed the wrong address into uh, this application, so now you have to start over again. They completely screwed those people oh, yeah. by just letting it sit on the desk. And I've seen that happen before. I, I don't well, know. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, but it just—it was such a stark realization to me of how Somebody's long it's been. Didn't get greased is what happened. Right. Right. And, right. And and how long it's been? Or somebody since, didn't know that they were supposed to go grease a pocket. <laughs> Well, you know what? That's what I say about living in these third world countries, which I've also done, is I actually prefer that because you can go pay off the guy. And yes, it's corrupt, but at least you know that when you give that guy the 500 bucks, he's going to leave you the fuck alone for the next year. Oh, sure. And you're done and you're good to go. And, and your little piece of paper gets a signature that it needs and you're off to the races here. It's, you it's don't like get the semi-honest highway, man. <laughs> Yeah. 
So oh, that's, that's sorry for the uh, start. Sorry for starting off with a huge rant, but <laughs> that's what's been on my mind. We wouldn't have Merrick Landingham on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I, I asked. I was fixing uh, to say this wouldn't be this wouldn't be any other way. I don't think. Yeah, I, I, I did ask for you to, to, to let loose, man. So, so it's quite all right. But I was just going to say, I mean, I, I understand, you know, what you're talking about with the third world countries and stuff. I mean, that's the same reason that I've said for a while that I, I prefer the policing, the policing method of the federales in Mexico, because at least they're honest about it. You know, they just say, give, give us the money and we'll let you go. Okay. If I could pay you the money and be left alone. Okay. I'll do it that way. You know? Oh, I, absolutely. Uh, I was in years ago, I was in Bali and a friend of mine got thrown in jail and it cost a one US $100 bill passed over the table and he was out. No tax, no tracks, no paperwork, no release notes, no nothing, no court date. You just, that's what, that's what we're waiting on hundred dollars yeah and 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 then i get my friend back and i'm like you know what i think that that's actually more honest than what we're dealing with here oh it absolutely is if, if you're gonna get if, if you're gonna get hustled i'd rather much get i'd much rather get an honest hustle you know <laughs> like you know yeah you, you know yeah, you, yeah no absolutely i'd rather they be upfront about it exactly so that's yeah but i mean you're right though because all of these all of these things and i do remember i mean i obviously don't know the full extent of the red tape you guys had to go through but i do remember uh manny talking like venting about that on, on 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 social media for a while about how ridiculous it was all the stuff you guys were going through so i and you know just through my own travels in the business world in the past dozen or so years i mean luckily as i've said before my my business always fell into kind of a weird gray area here that i was allowed to get away with a lot of stuff that i didn't have to deal with all that red tape but i saw what you have to deal with for just pretty much any other business you know even you know talk about barriers to entry even the insanity of you know, ridiculously expensive permits and business licenses for jobs that really should not be requiring at all. I mean, I don't think most jobs should, but like, you know, like the hairdressers things or stuff like that, where you got to have a permit, you got to have you have the right license. And it's like, why? <laughs> and all of those are rigged jobs too, man. It's like, look, what'll happen is, is a big contractor will lobby some state, you know, council member to pass it to where you can't operate in the city without this business license. Well, they'll only offer them to like four or five guys in reality that everybody else gets set on a list or whatever, on a shelf to wait. And uh, everyone else has to then go get and pay these other contractors that have the license to basically get the job through them as a proxy. Basically like, hey, here's four grand. Can I go get this job now for you? Will you sign off and say that you're the lead contractor on it? And that's just basically the scam that they've set up. Oh, it is. It's a hell of a racket. And uh, going back to what Jeremy was talking about with Manny, yes, he did the yeoman's work on that. This is a guy who's a retired lawyer talking about Manny. And by mm -hmm. the way, just a, a beautiful human being, one of the most wonderful people I've ever met in my life. Uh, and Great beard genetics, too. Oh, and good beard, too. Just epic beard. But he can grease the skids even though he is a moral person, he's not like sliding money under the table. He's doing it above board and he has the patience to deal with the, the bureaucracy. Whereas I'm the one who is a, a lot less, uh, patient with that. I'm the one who, who wants to hoist the black flag and stick my middle finger up in the air and say, fuck you, man, let's, you know, I'm doing what I'm going to do. And if you come on my property and try to stop me, then we'll have, you know, we're going to make it biblical. Uh, even <laughs> with him being that tight, it still took him everything that he had not to just punch somebody's lights out to get this done. And I'm thinking about the, you know, the younger folks who are trying to become entrepreneurs, which w let's think about it. What do we want out of our kids? Uh, and and, and y'all know me, I've got two, sustainability. Two, uh, yeah, I've got two kids and I want them both to be completely uh, independent and hopefully eventually agorist, you know, to operate outside of the state. I'm trying to teach both of them how I am gently doing that without getting thrown into jail. But, you know, even looking at Derek, he's, he's coming down this weekend. He, he wants to learn how to clean. That's, he, he called me up last week. 
or a week before last, I'm sorry, and then came down last week just to learn because he's been watching us and seeing what we're doing and seeing that check come across the counter and seeing what that amount of money is and seeing that a lot of it is just cash money. And he's looking for that career. And he said, Hey, I think I want to do this. Well, okay, great. I will teach you everything you need to know about cleaning because I've been doing it. I started doing commercial cleaning in about 91. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm not much to look at, but I know what the fuck I'm doing when it comes to, to the, some of these things. <laughs> and, and, Just and, and I'm, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I mean, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I told him, I said the the actual work itself is easy. Yeah, it's physical, but Hey, we, otherwise we'd be paying for a gym membership. So who cares? I mean, the physical stuff, that's, that's a bonus to me. I like that. That's not the hard part. Marketing yourself, not the hard part. You, 100% of my business comes from referrals. So it's no the big deal and there. Out grind. No, the hard part, Dave, is the dealing with the state. If you're late by one day in the state of Florida with your sales tax uh, payment, they're going to charge you a $150 late fee. They're going to threaten you with jail. They're going to do all kinds of terrible things <clears throat> just to, to, to really intimidate you and threaten you. That is a barrier to entry. It's not trying to drum up the business. It's trying to deal with the state. Uh, I, who was it? Uh, was it Jeremy or Andre? Which one of you was talking about the hairdresser thing? Oh, uh, that was me. Uh, okay. Yeah. In the state of Florida, you, do you know that it takes more hours of uh, regulated training to become a hairdresser than it does to become a fucking paramedic yep. in the state of Florida? I had heard that. To become yeah. certified. It's insanity. That's actually true it, in a lot of places. It's it, it's mind-numbing. Yeah, it's absolutely. because somebody, so, so a bunch of old hairdressers lobbied some state senator or something, and it happened that way. Oh, so they yeah, can absolutely. keep a racket. Absolutely, it is a racket. It's but, always uh, about ra it's always about you know the big shark. You ever seen that big shark swimming in the water? It's got all those little ones just feeding off all the little scraps that's left over, and you know all the stuff that's left over on the shark. That's that's what these parasites are. These people that that lobby to get laws changed to stop people from competing with them. Yeah, they're they're rent seekers. It's exactly what they are. Yep. Yeah, rent seekers is the right word here. Great for bringing that one up, man. Good job. Every I get lucky every once in a while. Every <laughs> once in a while. I do. <laughs> You're smarter than you look, man. I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I know short. it. Lord, I know it. Yeah. No, but but that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it is, and it's uh, yeah. No, I, I mean, Dave's Dave's largely right. That's usually what how it starts by some. It's usually some people that uh, were trying to corner the market that lobby to get it done. And it's I mean, you, Dave, you mentioned the, the contractor scenario earlier where there's only a limited amount of them. Sometimes it's that more often than not, they open they quote unquote, open it up to the public for these licenses. But they set the price level that it, it drives the people, mainly the people Merrick's talking about, the young entrepreneur, the person who's looking to strike out on their own for the first time, it usually ends up knocking them out of the market completely because they don't you know, forget it, forget getting a loan to start up a business. A lot of these people, I'm one of them. I bear like if I if there was a business license for what I do back when I started, I would have been hard pressed to yeah. come up with the money for it. You know, I, I was able to scrape together the money just for the insurance and the dishonesty bond and whatever courses I could take and uh, and and the, the registration fees for the, the different organizations I, I, I joined up with so I could get uh, free advertising through them. And those weren't even state related. Those were like things I voluntarily chose to pay for. Um, so if I had to deal with all the other state bureaucracy, I would have never been able to do it. And that's that's usually how these price levels are set. It's just high enough. It's just high enough to keep a lot of people out of the market, and just low enough that the the bigger companies Oof. and the ones that the ones the ones who lobbied for it in the first place don't even care about it. Just a bat, they just bat their eye. You know, they they don't even bat it's, their eyes at it. It's thirty five hundred dollars to just get them to come take for them to 
go, come out and look to certify you as organic farmer in Alabama. So there's a lot of people that are basically, they fit the bill. They, they are growing organically, you know, like to the legal state standards. They just can't afford the $3,500 or whatever it is to get the stamp of approval or whatever from the state. And this drastically affects how much they can charge for their, uh, their produce. So oh, that there's of course. people that are obviously have enough money to pay these that have lobbied for these barriers to entry that uh, are greatly, greatly benefiting from it. <laughs> well, yeah, that's pretty much the way it works. Uh, you, you guys know that I spent a lot of years working in uh, management and, and retail and, and doing training and whatnot. And I did a lot of work with the military and with the government in general. Uh, EPA, uh, the, the uh, oh God, I, I don't even, I'm not going to name them off, but just a lot of agencies and they would come to me and say, Hey, we need, uh, you know, a hundred of these pick something, I don't know, scuba cylinders. And I'm like, okay, it's about a $10,000 contract. Well, how do I do that? And they say, well, because it's over the threshold, you have to do GSA. And the, Andre, this is where you can probably chime in if you want to, but you have to have a GSA contract. And I'm like, you do realize that that would take me about 100 man hours to write that schedule and then submit it and then wait and then have it approved and then possibly, you know, get the approval to, to make that sale. Whereas yeah. these other bigger companies, uh, they, they have a corporate law team. Yeah, they, they've got a team sitting there doing this 24-7. And as a, as yeah, a it's small just, hey, company... Bob, fire which, one of these contracts up. <laughs> yeah, as a small company, that was a huge barrier for me because I did not have... I, I could not physically do that. And I'm like, okay, so this is actually just set up so that they automatically get the business. And the well, answer yeah, to and that is... Of course, well, yeah, that way of course by it design. is. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it. That's by design. It's not by accident. Mm -hmm. Woo! I didn't even know I was going to go off on a rant, but boy, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rant yeah, but that's what we love to. Can, yeah, man. but that's what we love to hear from you. You're you're great at it. It's perfect. And another thing, <laughs> I and another am thing. Sick I'm tired sick and tired of being of being sick and sick tired. And tired. <laughs> but uh, Merrick has these he has these moment of clarities in the middle of these rants where he just kind of, he goes, he goes on into, into uh, to rant mode. <laughs> oh, it was great. When I was, when I was down there, uh, what was it? Uh, last month or earlier this month? No, it was last month. Yeah. yeah a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago. I was like about three weeks ago now. Uh, we totally just kicked it in the evening after everybody else went to sleep and we just, I'd had like a few drinks in me. He had a couple of drinks in him. We just, we just ranted. One That's all we did. We just went back and forth. And you know, and you some things I wasn't proud of, cherry. but you know, <laughs> I love how he says no, I this... had a a couple of drinks in me. That's <laughs> it was probably that's like six or seven. Not entirely accurate, but yeah, it was a, 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 an enormous under under representation of how much alcohol was actually in my system but, <laughs> but i was I kept, still able I, to i was still able to walk around so that's you know that's uh, the important part as long as i'm still stable on my feet yeah well i kept him up to like 1 30 in the morning and i was just talking and just going off and then all of a sudden i looked up and i'm like what are you doing man why are you you this poor guy is just stuck here on your couch and you're just ranting away you, <laughs> you can't do that i'm like okay well that's no no I'm no so, no it was good. i'm very was socially awkward I, no no that was part of what i came <laughs> oh, down no, that's for. What I that was great <laughs> <laughs> no it was it, uh, in, i think, in, in, I think we stayed honesty, up all night yelling fun. about shit as well merrick i mean it just happens. oh no you and i did i know that but i had a feeling that you well jonathan that. was there as well yeah so well, he, yeah, he's always good until four or five in the morning. And I'm, I'm the one that's like, I am out of here, guys. I can't do this anymore. I, I understand that we're in this deep philosophical conversation, but I'm done. You know, <laughs> no mas. Yeah, I'm a night owl. By, yeah, by, I am by too, and I can't afford habit. to be I'm a stir. night owl. I hate it. I, I, I sleep those Donald Trump hours, man. I sleep like four hours, five hours. 
Yeah. Hell was, yeah. That's what know. I'm talking about. I, I don't know. I've, I've been like that. I, I actually have been like that since I got off sugar. After I, once I got off processed sugar, like like my sleep habits came back to me from my younger days. It was crazy. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've gone back to doing segmented sleep. So I'll I'll sleep for four hours in the afternoon and then be up until like two or three and then sleep mm-hmm. until day you know daylight wakes me up. And I usually mm-hmm. feel better when I do that. I think that's more of a natural cycle. Yeah. How do we get here in this in this conversation? I don't even know where, well, where when, this is going. Well, when when Dave Painter's around, uh, the, ma- the master of the magical things that's going to happen. That's going okay. to happen. All right, all right. So. As long as you guys are good with it, I'm good with it. Oh yeah, no. It's, I'm just saying. I, I just yeah. I've learned to roll with it. So Dave, uh, Dave entrepreneurship. So many, <laughs> Dave, Dave derails so many yeah. conversations. <laughs> Coming back full circle. Yeah. I, I think it's so hard now for young people trying to get in, and everybody's talking about what fight for fifteen or fight for thirteen or whatever in the heck it is that's this magical number that they're trying to 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 uh, 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 attach that is going to make everything better. And of course, uh, all of you, and I know all of you personally, so that I, I know that all of you understand economics well enough mm-hmm. to know that that is complete bunk. And, and and all of the reasons, any one of us could just lay out the reasons why that is bunk. But with all of that well, going they think on, a job is just like something. They don't. Well, it's it. it, it no, nah, it just goes back to market function. It, no, it's labor theory of value. And yes. once again, any one of us sitting here on the microphone could explain it as well as anybody else. But. When when you put up those barriers of like minimum wages and and those things, you say, well, okay, how come people aren't just starting their own businesses as young people? And I'm talking when I say young, I'm talking about you know kids like like my son at 24, 25. How come they're not just doing their own thing and saying screw it? Well, because they can't because of these reasons. Because you know when we live in the land of the free. You need to have that business permit first, and then you need that general liability uh, policy second, and then you need that LLC third, and then you need uh, the business license, just a general business license. So that that's another, you know, this much, and it takes a while. And then you got to pay payroll taxes if you have a payroll employee, and then you have to have insurance to cover your payroll employees, and then you. But now we got a twelve and a half percent tax, but we got to divide it, and you got to get the numbers right, and then we got FICA, we got FUDA, we got all of these things that we have to do, which puts an incredible amount of administrative uh, Mm -hmm. burden on top of you on the back end, even after you're done with the work. What if I'm doing roofing? What if I'm doing concrete? Well, not every company is a three-tier corporate, you know, like behemoth that can handle all this litigation. And that's to say nothing if you need like a, a specialized license on top of a general business license. Yep. Okay. So yeah, that's it, that's to say nothing of all the other licenses you you may need to have based on other government regulations. Like for example, in the vaping industry, now per FDA regulations, if you want to manufacture your own e liquid, you have to have you have to pay the FDA and file paperwork such that you label yourself a manufacturer. So there's additional cost and additional paperwork for that. So I mean, not not only not only does this does our store have to have a business license just to operate a business, but we also have to pay money to the feds in order to operate the business the way we want to operate the business. So you know, it's there's so there there's so many barriers, and you listed all of, pretty much all of them, but it's there's even more than that. Oh, there's pretty much more any than conceivable that. way. Yeah, any conceivable way you can think of to just impinge. On oh, finding a, like a employees proprietor. that won't sue you for some stupid crap. You know, there's oh, all kinds yeah. of stuff, man. Oh yeah. All right. So, so to to put a to put a hammer on that nail right there. This is what happened to me a couple of months ago. Uh, I I don't just do cleaning. We also do property management of uh, rental like condos and stuff. And. I have been renting long-term rentals where people come in for nine months to 12 months and they don't pay as well, but that's okay. I have a voluntary agreement with the owner that I take a lower commission to deal with, you know, the issues that come up along the way. 
and I get a random email from a realtor friend of mine, and he says, hey, Florida just passed this law. And I'm like, ah, shit. If you guys <laughs> know go. Florida, we go. yeah, if you guys know Florida, you know that it's, Florida, it's the land of the land of Puritans. You know that that they, they all have in Tallahassee. They all have this overboding fear that somebody somewhere might either be having a good time or be making money, and they can't stand it. God, no. Yeah, no horror. The so, horror. The horror. Uh, so he says, yeah, they just passed this law that, uh, if you want to do more of these long-term rentals, which I have a few, now you have to, in, to be in compliance with Florida law, you have to have a broker's license. Well, a broker's license for those who are not familiar is that's when you become a realtor and then you go back to school Yeah, and you do more and you do more and you do more. It's like your master's degree and in uh, uh real estate well i've been doing real estate so for trying a long to get long brokers time employed no this was all the this was all brought about by the brokers union uh if you will mm -hmm. but i had to give up all of my long-term rentals because i don't have that license why because it would take me probably another i don't know 500 hours and four thousand dollars which i don't have either the time well, I, I mean, the money's not the big deal, but I don't have the time to do that. And they just shut me out of what I've been doing for 15 years because I don't have the license. Those are the barriers to entry that I'm talking about. And you can't no, pay a broker but wait a minute, wait, 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 just, in Florida to do it for you? Well, I just No, no, actually you can't. That is specifically in there. You cannot do that. Well, I just, because I just, otherwise I could have just paid him a part of what I was making, but I couldn't do it. He's like, nope. And here's why here's section, you know, S dot one eighteen subsection. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they're just, they, they just push you right out. They push you out of the game. Well, me well, having the experience and being able to work around a lot of these things, that's why I'm looking at it. I'm like, how could anybody new, how could a young person look at what I'm doing? And this is not me beating my chest, okay? This is just me observing what's going on. How could any young person look at what we're doing and say, I want to do that, and then they see all of the barriers to entry and go, yeah, I can push through that. No, they, they're going to look at it and go, the hell with that. Yeah, you I'll know, just go get a job. I'm not investing it. my time and effort into that shit. I'll, I'll just yeah, go get a job yeah. somewhere that'll pay me a salary, and then I don't have to worry about the uh, back end stuff and the you know right <laughs> overhead. Yeah, which is what happens. That's what they think. So once again, another rant. And I'm sorry, but no, no, it's, that's, uh, it's a good one. There you go. Yeah, well, the, the, the one thing I just I no, just want all, all of these rants have been. I, I just want to clarify for our audience though. Now, now they shut you down because you know you didn't have the proper paperwork. Because obviously, in the fifteen years beforehand, when there was no paperwork at all for this particular thing, I'm sure that you know your rental units were just like blowing up randomly um, and uh, just collapsing on people. Right? You know, that's why they had people dying in, in the place. streets. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. No, they were they were dying. <laughs> they would they would turn on the stove and it would explode. Uh, some big that, real estate company wanted to get bigger is what happened. Well, here's what happened is that for all of those years, my customers, my clients, uh, uh the, the owners of these long-term rental units loved what I did. And that's why we had the agreements, you know, voluntary agreements. Anybody ever heard of those that we could work together. And at any time, and all of my contracts say this, at any time, all they have to do is give me 30 days notice. They can hire somebody else. But guess what they didn't do? Right. They didn't hire somebody else. <laughs> Why would they not do that? Why? Because they liked the service that I was providing. So after 15 years, the state of Florida looked at that and said, yeah, it's not good enough. Uh, now you can't do that anymore. And the last guy that I, I literally had to fire this client, and he's like, why? Because he lives in Alabama. He's in Montgomery, right there where you are, uh, no. Andre. And, and, and he's like, why is that? And I said, because Florida law. You know, now you have to go hire one of these big companies 
who did all the lobbying, uh, and they're going to charge you double what I'm charging you, and they're going to do a much worse job, but there is nothing that I can do about it. And it's just maddening. And so when I go off on these rants about Couldn't these... You, uh, reclassify what you're actually doing for his room? See, that's... That's a big thing that uh, this farmer Joel Salatin talks about. Like they, he had an outside chicken uh, processing house, and they were like, "Well, you got to build all these walls and put all this in and that." And he he looked up the legal definition for a wall, and it was only eighteen inches. Well, so he just built these eighteen inch walls around the whole thing, and then this, <laughs> the state processors come back and they were like, "Hey, what the hell is this?" And he was like, "The walls you wanted." And they were like, "Well, it needs a window." He's like, "Got it," and built like a two inch window on top of the corner of one wall. He looked up the legal definition of a wall, and all and it was like, "Look, go," and and it was going to take more time for them to go. They'd have to lobby to get an addendum to add the language in the law to prevent this would happen, and, and it's just not worth their damn time just to stop one farmer so you have to subvert this uh merrick you could go down and be like look let me uh, uh whatever you want to call it let me do that here but we it'll still be condo cleaning and, and you could say oh they're paying me for dusting uh their phones that's it i just come over here and dust their phone or whatever it doesn't matter i inspect their uh, condos to make sure that they're clean that's it well i'm an inspector i don't i don't know who that guy is but I, oh. I tip my hat to him Joel and uh, I would I would buy him a I would buy him a six pack and a heartbeat and and he deserves a gold medal for that uh, the, my modus operandi and the way that I do things especially as I get a little bit older is not to go around people uh, especially when I'm talking when I say people I mean government types and the you know the enforcers it's not to go around them it's to go through them just walk right through them and if i can't do that then i i'm i think i'm smart enough to pick my battles and that was just not one that i was willing to take on at this point uh lord knows i'm doing you enough just re redo your LLC as a, a right window now. cleaning they, not Dude, gonna, I'm, not I'm, let this I'm go. skirting <laughs> i am skirting so much shit from the law right now well, just in the way that we're doing it and the way that we're getting paid that i'm already on pretty tenuous ground but i'm not going to play their game i guess is what i'm saying uh you know yeah maybe i back off of that for now but in the long run in the long game which is what i like to play i don't play the short game uh yeah, the long I'll game find is a to wait for the other company to come in there and shit the whole place up and come in and go, hey, I can do this on the down low for you for some cash on the side. <laughs> yes, but then it's still, it's still, it's still, that's still. For just like 10% under what he's already paying, and then you're making more already. So but, this is just a win win for you. Well, yes, it's, but there's still risk involved. And I get what Merrick's saying because that's what, that's what it is. I mean, you make it sound so simple, Dave. And I, I know Joel Salatin's story and there are some people, I mean, I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people who constantly fights and says, you know, bring it. Um, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I keep pushing limits, but it's not for everybody. And, Say and, it ain't so. And who? Yeah, me no. Um, no and, and Merrick no. and Merrick is probably actually smarter about this than I am because he's recognized this and he's saying, you know, you're you're right. Unfortunately, in the current paradigm, you do have to pick your battles. You know, especially if, especially if you're you know, your income and your, your family's uh, well-being is tied to like the pretty much the only thing you have is businesses that the state can at any one point in time decide to fuck with you and shut down. Like if that's your only source of income, like you're working for yourself, well, you got to be a little bit more careful sometimes. I'm still not, obviously, you know, I could probably learn some lessons from Eric on this, but it's, you know, I, I, I love that attitude, Dave, but unfortunately, the reality is, you know, you do got to pick your battles, and if 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 you, especially if you got kids, you got to, you know, you gotta you gotta weigh the you gotta weigh out the uh, the risk benefit thing and say, well, yeah, do I want to stick my thumb in the eye of the state? Absolutely. Do I want my kids to have dinner more than sticking my thumb in the eye of the state? I think it yeah. all depends on how hard you want to be a capitalist. <laughs> well, it's no, like it's well, like, like, it's like no. what we can, talked about before. You can right? subvert it's, it all by either either getting it under the table, paying the right bureaucrat off or just 
outright blowing off their regulations until they stop you and then say, what is it that I'm going to have to do to get back to business? And they'll tell you. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. And, and thanks Jeremy for the nice words. Uh, I don't necessarily think that I'm any smarter than you are, but I hey, mean, I, hey I, did specify, kinda... I did specify in this situation. I'm not going to, I'm okay. not going to disparage myself right. that much. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, 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 I'll grant you that, but you know, yeah, it's all about which hill do you want to die on? You know, we all... And that's really what it comes down to. That's exactly what it comes down yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Some of us will be lucky enough to to have the opportunity to pick the hill upon which we will die. And then when you're given the opportunity, you should probably choose that wisely. And... You know, I'm somewhere in between Ron Paul and Irwin Schiff when it comes to that, <laughs> because, and that's a joke, people. It's okay to laugh. Um, you know, I've seen what's happened to to some of my friends who have just basically said, "Fuck you guys, I'm out of here. I'm working for cash. I ain't paying you another dime for the rest of my life," and it has not ended well for them. Well, I have a family to worry about, and I, I just can't take that risk. You have to now, be pragmatic. I, Anyone who says yeah, they're not well, at least pragmatic, they drive on government roads. They, they, you know, they pay their property taxes. Not the Ann yeah, Prims, well, man. Not the Ann Prims. No. The Ann Prims <laughs> sit out in state <laughs> parks and just yell at other animals. <laughs> well, well, 30 years ago, I would have done it. I was a wild man. I would have done anything. Uh, and, and, you know, I have that, uh, that disease, what do they call it? ODD, oppositional defiance <laughs> disorder. And I would do anything, uh, you know, back, back in the day. We were talking earlier today about reading Thoreau. I was reading Thoreau in middle school, and I'm like, fuck these people, man. This guy's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, on hell, Walden I mean, Pond, everybody, it should be required reading. Uh, but at this stage in the game, I can't do that because if I go get thrown in a cage, my family loses everything, and that's a big yeah. deal. Yeah. And and I well, can't I, afford I don't think that. It's I've, I've trying worked. to skirt a regulation is uh, going to get you in jail, Merrick. I think what they'll do is they'll slap a little be fine or tell you you can't do business there, and you can just be like, okay, and just not do business in Florida. Okay, but now I'm being dictated the shot. To upon upon where I can live and where I can do commerce, and and what I'm trying to do. You're is already voluntary. dictated upon. Oh, it's like the evil you know eye on man. You, you just got to. I'm going to concede that point to you because that is actually very, very true. But I don't want to be forced out of where I am uh, as far as doing business. Things are going pretty well right now. And I'm keeping yeah. the to use your reference, I'm see keeping you lose the a sharks. 15 year client. That's ridiculous. Well, it is ridiculous, and that's the whole point of this conversation is that, you know, you're just getting pushed out for no reason. And you know where my, my mind goes is is all these useless freaking degrees that all these people are going to get. Do you not think they're not going to unionize? They're not going to start lobbying for all of all this stuff to be either forced, paid for by the state because, well, what do we get these degrees for? It's – uh Wow, that that that's already happened over the last generation or two, Dave. They're already quite aware of that, and they're not getting anywhere with it. They're not fighting back. Yeah, but then this whole gender studies, social science bullshit is about to come running down on our head. Like that's been going a on for a couple thousand decades. Pound tsunami. That's been going on for a couple of decades too. It's not new. Yeah. It didn't My really get where it is until like the last t ten years. It's really yeah. ramped up. It started in the late well, '90s. We're we're already almost almost at 2020. Yeah, it's been about 20 years. Like I said, <laughs> it's yeah. been going, well, man. Shit. I forget how, what what year it is. I know. Well, you have to you scary. have to think about that every now and then. It's like, oh crap, 2000 really was almost 20 years ago at this point. Jesus. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there's there's always going to be people fighting for that. Um, but 
You know, I mean, I guess my, my only hope is that, you know, more and more people start recognizing. And, and while there is a risk-benefit analysis that everybody has to place on these type of things, I, I, I hope that more people do decide to start saying, not maybe not fuck it entirely, although that would be the, the ultimate for me, but at least on, a, on like stuff like this, like say fucking it more and more, which is why uh, I, I'm a fan of uh you know the idea of intentional communities and stuff like that because if you get enough people in an area all kind of working together and saying f the system in a particular way for a particular law or regulation or whatever it is the more problems they have enforcing said law and then you can then you don't have to then you won't have to deal with that because you make the laws you make the laws and regulations unenforceable then it doesn't matter whether they're there or not they can't do anything about it you know, I, I was I was talking about this earlier today with uh, Luis Fernando Mises and a couple other people about about a different subject, but it's the same idea. It's just like, you know, yeah, is it risky? Sure, but if there's more of you, and you don't even all have to be in the same business, you know, that's why intentional communities, the ideas of those, I think, are so great because you get people that are, uh, you know, sh sharing in the division of labor, people doing different things, and then when there's more of you saying f you at the same time you kind of get a little bit more courage you know it seems a little less risky because there's more of you now you know you're not you're not this one man trying to run your business on the down low hoping against hope that no that nobody reports you so you don't have to deal with the bureaucratic nightmare that follows you know so I don't know that that's it's just like the, the guy out there on the dance floor. The first guy he's out there dancing. Everybody's like, look at that weirdo. And then somebody else is like, you know what? That guy's crushing it. And then walks out there and starts dancing with him. And then everybody joins in. Yeah, well, exactly. And that's why for, for as long as ever since I first heard it, that, that Mark Twain quote about, you know, in the beginning of change, the, uh, the Patriot is a scare, you know, scare, or what is it? Uh, is a scarce man and he's hated and scorned and you know, all that type of thing. Um, and then, uh, but once he, yeah, once, once he, once he, point. once he succeeds, then, uh, then more follow him because at that point it does, you know, it, it takes no courage to be a Patriot then, you know, and, and even though I, that, that word has a negative connotation for me, I love the idea because yeah, there's gotta be trailblazers, but it makes it a hell of a lot easier if you're not blazing that trail all by yourself, you know, I don't know. That's well, just, it would be nice yeah. if we had about 10% of the population on board with us, but the, the, the fact is there. that, that we don't. Well, no, this point, we I don't. agree, but that's that's why I think the the idea of intentional communities could be very helpful towards that because when, you know, I've talked about this before and I, I use that 10% number, but I, I don't sp specify, you know, it's not like 10% of the United States has to do this. 10% of any given population anywhere, even a smaller population, even a county, even a town, even a fucking neighborhood, like 10% start doing that. That's, that's what starts to change because the majority of people, uh, are followers just by nature. Most people, most people want to go along to get along. They don't want to rock the fucking boat. It's the psycho radicals like us that are always fucking tipping the goddamn thing going, how far can we rock this before we really push the fucking thing over, man? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But the more of us that get together, I don't think most people realize that 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 these that that if if you're on the radical end of a spectrum, and we all are, we're on these hard rad like to almost where the spectrum doesn't even matter to us. The that w what we say, er like we're so far down the the end of radical stuff. Like when we walk into normie land, when you pop, when you when you pop it, like for instance, if you're on Facebook and you just pop into just like a normal thread. You're like, holy crap, this is what real life people are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to get Rhodes arguments from these people, ain't I? Oh, yeah. The bitch ass Rhodes, man. And that's exactly the Rhodes. What is. The well, bitch ass yeah. Rhodes. Bitch anyway. ass Rhodes. Yeah, I, I talk to normal, uh, I say normal people, people that don't Muggles. spend all day. Uh, rifling in through inter internet internet forums and stuff trying to keep up with the current events of the days um they just well, it's like hey well, did you uh, see that commercial the other day it's real funny it's like no i didn't <laughs> I don't have time to watch now, TV. Wait, wait a minute dave because i'm one of those people who doesn't spend all day on the interwebs looking at stuff i don't i don't even have cable television so i don't spend all day watching you're fairly, those things uh, and fairly informed on some things 
Well, I try to be, but I'm not spending all day on CNN or Fox News or MSNBC or any of those other things. Or the Drudge Report. Well, but it's it's not Dave. even it's not even that you have to spend all day. Well, on neither that. am it's I. Your your yeah your your philosophical underpinnings <laughs> set you aside from those people because you've actually taken a step back and given some very critical thought to you know how you understand information, how you understand and perceive reality, how you you know trying to come up with you know universal or universalizable ethics and moral standards and principles of interaction with other human beings. Like 95% of the population, well, actually probably like 99% of the population hasn't even like, that, that, that thought has never even crossed their mind. No, no. Like ethics, yeah. oh, that's, that's like one of those things that you learn about Snapchat. in college, right? Why, why don't I have more people messaging me back on Snapchat? Like that's what the... That's what the normal person thinks. That's, think that's the extent of their interaction. That, that's the depth yeah. of their of their interaction with the rest of the world. Like that, that's as far and, as it goes. Correct, and that's where I think the disconnect really ties in. That because people like me, and I'm, I understand when I say these things that I'm going to come off as being horribly arrogant, and I really don't want it to sound that way. The, but maybe not I, but I, you are <laughs> yeah well yeah and and, and i'll own that That's <laughs> i've fine. never thought you've no, sounded I'm, arrogant I'm totally, one I'm totally time messing around with you no that, that was, was a that was a cheap shot the then i set it up for him and he he knocked it out of the park um that's no, all right it's all right boss i i I'll, I'll let it go oh there's another one i love that <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'm sorry go on I, go on go on no i love this guy um <laughs> You know, when I do talk about these things, it's only out of experience and it's out of having been run through that ringer one too many times. And it's out of having had to go through that and seeing, oh boy, here I'm starting to fail again. I, 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 well, luckily I, we're not. I have to. Do, well, I have to choose my my words carefully because once again, I'm trying not to to come off as arrogant. But I have been down that river and I have rode that road, and I get it. And th to tie all of this back together to our original uh, conversation, uh, it's it's not easy to navigate the waters that they have, and when I say they, I'm talking about the state that they have set up for you. And, and even when you do, you're going to have to fight them the whole way. Uh, I just recently resigned from a post that I've had for years uh, on the Marine Advisory Committee uh, for the county here where I live in Escambia, uh, when, which is Pensacola for the listeners in Florida, because I was just tired of it. And you know, you get to a point that you're like, you know what? To steal a line, you just say, fuck it, we'll do it live. We're going to fix it and post. I just don't want to have to deal with any of that anymore. Any of that, that legislation, any of those regulations, any of those things. And I'm like, hey, I've got a great idea, just like what we're working on now, doing, doing some stuff with crypto that is a fantastic idea. And all the lawyers are looking at it and going, hey, you can't do this and you can't do that. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to do it. <clears throat> Just no. Because That's I'm, I'm why I like Merrick Van Landingham. <laughs> I'm just tired of it, man. That they're, these are my, here's the way it comes off, guys. This does not come down to me. Okay. I've got it made. I'm done. All right. If if I don't work another fucking day in my life, I'm o I'm gonna be okay. This is where I come off as being horribly arrogant, but it is what it is. But I'm worried about my kids, and now I'm looking at how do I get them into doing what I've done, and what have I done? We haven't even established that. What I've done is a lot of years of fucking hard work. And expecting to get a decent return on investment off of that hard work. That's not too much mm -hmm. to ask. Now, you know, we could go, we could dive into, you know, how did Alexander Hamilton convince George Washington to pull off the Whiskey Rebellion? 
and what a horrible instance that was of exactly what we're talking about where hey man pay up sucker and like i ain't paying you nothing i don't owe you nothing and they're like no nah, pay up sucker i ain't paying you okay well we're coming with the guns and the troops how do i get around that when i'm trying to talk to my kids about well here's how you live in the freest land in the world you know it, whatever you guys call it these days, you kids, I don't even know, land of the free. <laughs> How do I get around that and tell them, yeah, but it's not exactly like that. Um, you, you're going to have to do this and you're going to have to do that. And you're going to have to do the other because if you don't, they will come after you. But now it's not like 1973. Now when they come after you, even for a minor slight either real or perceived it's going to be heavy and it's going to have they have fucking tanks now and dogs and crazy stuff and i know that i'm being a little bit hyperbolic but that's on purpose how do you talk to kids today about how you can make it in life when they're facing all of those things that's really i guess boy what a circular argument that was but uh you know about how difficult that really is well and that's and why, I, that's don't, why I, I don't know well that's why we've had um, and we've had this conversation before on the show I, I think we we've talked about it you know how much risk are you willing to take on yourself and that's really a question that everybody who holds the same principles that we do really has to to ask themselves because you're absolutely right you do have to be you you there are practical considerations to be made like we all have you know, what I would argue are the best principles out there, the ones that can't really be argued against without going into contradiction land. But, right. you know, th there are practical considerations that you have to take into account whenever you want to decide on a particular course of action to either subvert the state or avoid the state or go around or do whatever you want to do that's going to, you know, run the risk of you earning their wrath and their ire. So, I mean, it, it, it does to say that oh, well, you know, you must not really believe in what you're talking about because uh, you're driving on the roads. Like, okay, yeah, I mean, either that or I don't do anything. Or like, oh, well, you pay taxes and you, you do all this other stuff, so you must not really care, so this must not really be that important to you. Like, no, it is, but there are other things that are equally important to me, and there are people that depend on me. And, like, I, you know, my life is my own to, to do whatever I want with it, I but, like, a... if I... If I go down, then my family's left with dick all. So, you know, I, I think there's a, a a slight difference between keeping the monkey on your back and actively lobbying for the state to oppress other people. Oh you yeah, know? no, and of course there is. Of course there is. I mean, it, it's the difference between you know. Well, I I deal with what I have to deal with because there's really no good way to get around it without incurring a lot of wrath from people that have guns and a lot more power and a, and wield more capital you know capital assets than I do and oh well we should definitely use those for whatever x y and z right mm -hmm. yeah there's Spot a huge on. difference there's a huge yep. difference huge I think, but at I the think end of the, the biggest... day it's it's up it's the individual that that makes that choice it's it's whatever each individual person is willing to risk for it. That doesn't mean that the principles mean less to those people because they're willing to risk less. That just means that they have other considerations that you don't. Like 10 years ago, I wouldn't care if I went to jail for, you know, being a pain in the ass and a thorn in government side, but now I can't afford to do that. I, I it's like like you said, Merrick, I have people that depend on me. Particularly me. So, you know, I can't Yeah. Well, yeah, specifically, you know, with me, or in my case, that that's the way it is. And I had to tell my son this the other day, and it really hurt me deeply to have to tell him that, <clears throat> excuse me, what I do, I'm sticking my dick out on the chopping block on a daily basis with what we do. And I, I'm working my way right through the system, and I've got my middle finger in the air as I'm doing it. <laughs> but that's dangerous territory, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. 
especially to him, because if it falls on me, yeah, I get thrown in a cage and things happen and I have to wait it out. But that's nothing new to me. I've been to jail a bunch of times. I'm, I'm used to that. But I'm not going to ask that of my children to have to put their dicks on the chopping block in order oh, yeah. just to earn an honest living. I don't, I don't think I... I... <laughs> I don't think anybody should stick their their neck out that hard unless they feel so morally compelled to uh, protect another human's life or something or our property from the state that they they feel like they have no other choice. Uh, I, you know, if someone's got you know kids and, and you know people that heavily depend on them to 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 live, uh, I think I think it's better to make more rational decisions. You know, the well, boot may course. be on your neck and you may be pissed off about it and yelling at the guy with the boot on your neck, but uh, you, you still have to be rational about your situation you're in. Well, yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I keep cutting everybody off, but that's what I do and you guys know that. Oh, no, um, I'm a professional cut-offer. Okay. Yeah, you are. Um, I, I don't enjoy subjugating myself in order to get things done. But I'm Unless willing really to do it. Night. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm willing to do it in order to provide for my family. That's not really the problem. I can work around that. Um, I'm I'm actually pretty good at that. It's just what am I laying out for my kids when they're coming of age and now they're like, "Hey, Dad, what do what do I do at this point?" You know, I need a career. I need a life. I need something to put my name on. What do I do? And I'm like, well, you could do this, but it's going to take this, that, and the other. You know, I like I said, I'm in a position where I can afford to take a little bit more risk. Not enough to get thrown in jail, but I can take more risk. But they're not. And mm -hmm. if I tell well, them to take the same path that I did, it's the, the state will not allow it. It just will not work. Well, actually, here's, well, here's, here's what, I think about, what I think about that specifically. Because, I mean, we were all talking about, you know, if it was X number of years ago when I didn't have all these obligations and all these other things that I had to worry about, I could afford to take more risks. I mean... It, our children are going to be in that position when they mature, when they come of age. So they're going to be in a position where they can take those risks. Now, as parents, obviously, we don't want them because we have a vested interest in making sure that they're okay and they're safe and they're not in jail and you know dealing with all the other bullshit. But really and truly, our kids do have that ability because once when they're coming of age unless they're you know they get married right out of the gate and you know they pop out a kid and you know suddenly like at 18 they're their parents unless that happens and you know then you have somebody depending on you they're gonna be you know for all intents and purposes free white and 21 they can they can do it they can take on those risks because they're they don't have people depending on them so i to yeah. to to respond to what you were saying merrick Actually, I think your your son would be in a position to do all these things that would be too risky for you to take, take on because he doesn't have anybody depending on him. You know, again, obviously as as his dad, you don't want him to you don't want him to do that. Same way I don't want Kate to do that, but you know, ultimately at the end of the day, they're much better positioned to do that than than we are now. No, nah, that's a very valid point and point well taken. Yeah. I, I you said something. Oh, sorry, Jeremy. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, they 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 will have that ability, and I guess they'll have that window. But I don't know. I I, I kind of I I think I was understand I understand America a little differently. I because I see it as you know you don't want them to take that risks. I mean, I mean. Oh yeah, no, I don't. I don't oh, want no, Kate no. to do that shit either. Oh no, no, I know. Yeah, but, we, but we keep talk. We keep talking about you know you guys have both expressed you know the reason why you don't do certain things is because of that risk benefit analysis, and you realize you know, and as as we've talked about before, and we mentioned earlier, you know, I'm somebody who does push those limits, even though I am in a similar situation to you guys, um, but I do it out of the out of the idea that the more I do it, hopefully the less they will need to. 
Like there won't, uh, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stick my neck out more and push, you push boundaries I in a lot of ways the first wave so that, <laughs> so that they don't, ha- so they have, so they have less to deal with because if I can pull off the stuff that I'm trying to pull off right now, I will, you know, hopefully be able to set them up where it won't be necessary for them to uh, take as many risks, you know, because I'll have already laid the groundwork for them. Um, but again, that that comes down to you know everybody's individual decisions and and how far they're willing to take it, you know. Because I, you know, obviously none of us want our kids to, to take those risks. But you're, I mean, you're right, Andre. They they'll have that opportunity, but I'd still have I'd still rather have them not even need the opportunity. You know what I mean? I don't think. Well, I mean. Even oh, yeah, if somebody does ahead, have kids, there's been thousands of soldiers that have had kids, thousands of <laughs> millions of men that have had offspring to worry about at home that have had to take, you know, steps to push humanity forward, sacrifices. So yeah, and, and yeah, that doesn't mean that, that I have means, to. Go, go ahead, ahead, Merrick. It doesn't mean that I have to appeal to antiquity, that we've always done it that way. Therefore. It means that it's okay. Well, no, like you said earlier, every man's got his hill. And I'm saying is, is like, don't let anyone push you off your hill. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least find something that you're willing to just lay it all on the line for is what I'm saying. At least stand okay. for something. All right. Now, that, that, that makes sense. And and I am willing. And I've, I've, I've told said my- it publicly. They come for the guns. I'm done. Like, that's I don't care what happens after that. Well, I've told both of my children this. And I'm, I'll take this off on a tangent because that's what I do. Uh, I've told both of my sons and my wife this, that the day that the guys show up with the fancy car with the lights and the uniform and the dog, that will be my hill. Because, And I'm not going to make this morbid or anything. Y'all can relax. It's okay. I'm not flying off the rails here. I prefer um, morbidity. Oh, you like that? Okay, I will That's shoot I that like. m- motherfucker in the they, no, Didn't no, you listen to I, last week's episode? Jeez. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that I'm willing to take that lick, that left hook at, that's coming out of nowhere for the sake of my children just because I'm willing to stand up for it. And even, you know, some people end up like Irwin Schiff, and, and that happens. And it's very unfortunate, but it does happen. But then you come out the back end of it with, you know, kids that are much better off. So I'm always kind of walking on this tightrope of this moral conundrum of, hey, do I just die on the hill in front of them so that they can use that as a justification for pressing forward? Or do I play it smart and and back my game up a little bit so that they don't have to go through that? And I, I don't know, maybe if you're not a parent, you don't really kind of understand that or think your way through it, but I am a parent and I do think my way through that. And that's pretty much what I've come up with is that, hey, for all of my, my bluster and my palaver and my hyperbolic nature, it's probably better for me to back off a little bit and play it safe. Let's play the safe game so that my kids don't have such a hard time. Now, we could I guess we could talk about this all night long and and I know that we're going on, I know that we're getting late on time here. But you know, tying this back around to the entrepreneurship, that's where I'm at. I'm like, how far do I push so that they don't well, have to push it? I wanted to comment specifically on the entrepreneur stuff. And I and it's we've been talking about it all the whole show. But I don't think it's been framed this way. The, the, what do you think this life, is? Your show? <laughs> that was a that was a joke. Their whole lives, normal kids in our society are forced to go to schools, then go to college, then they're in a uh, they go to. You're told you go go get a good job. You know that's the ideal life. And in that life, if you follow it, there's no risk. If you just do what you're told, if you call, color in within the lines, uh, this should happen, right? That's a fantasy. That is a lie that doesn't exist. Yeah, the real world is a lot more savage than that. And the real world so, is where sorry. real people actually live. So, yeah, so what we have to do is start teaching 
kids this freedom to risk instead of freedom from risk. The freedom from risk is a lie. It, living is risky. Taking your next breath is risky. And this is Stepping something that waking up in the morning is risky. That's what this fight for 15. That's where these these forced uh, you got to hire me jobs come from. It's they want freedom from risk. I invested shittily into a career that is no longer existent or is not a market demand. Daddy government, please fix this for me. <laughs> they want freedom from risk. They don't want to compete in the marketplace. They are cowards. So you have to teach kids not to be cowards, not to take the easy way out. And it's hard. Well, it is. It's, it's going to be one of the hardest lessons that you teach children to do because, you know, simultaneously as a parent, you don't want them to stick their neck out and, you know, end up in a crappy situation or get hurt or, you know, do all these other things. You want to, you want to shield them from risk. But at the same time, you know, like you said, once you, once you get out in the real world, there is no such thing as freedom from risk. And you can't shield if you keep your children a plant forever. Inside, if you keep a plant inside and never let it get sunlight, you only give it artificial light. The minute you put it out in the sun, it'll cook it and kill it. So same thing with exactly. reality exactly. and children. Yep. Yeah. That's why I've, ever since my kids were very, very little, I've tried to be nothing with, uh, with, but honest about with them. And I, I explain things to them as I would uh, try to explain them to pretty much anybody else. And even when I get strange looks from family and friends, I'm just like, nope, sorry. They need to understand that the world is not, you know, rainbows and ponies. Um, yep. it, it, yep. it, it sucks. And, uh, you gotta, to that. you gotta, you gotta fight for what you want. Wouldn't you like, you okay. Fight to protect the ideal you self-sufficiency is what? 20 years old now. 22 years old the kid's supposed to be able to go out and do its own thing and now what if you had a kid that at 13 already was running two or three businesses and buying well, houses and property well i don't know about houses you know, and like, property but that's the type of thing that i want my kids to do that's why i that's why we that's why me and my ex do the unschooling because that's kind of what i'm hoping for because i've watched all these other parents that have done this people like you know people like dana martin who i just who is just i just saw a talk up in uh, michigan uh, last month um, and people like that who are out there and have been doing this unschooling thing for quite a while and their kids at 9, 10, 11, 12 years old are already starting their own businesses, you know, maybe not necessarily buying and selling land, but they're already they're already testing out their entrepreneurial skills and trying to figure out ways to make money because they're prepared for what's going to happen in the real world. They're not growing up thinking, "Oh, I just have to stick it out in high school until I'm 18 and then oh, I can go I can go jerk off in college for 4 years." There's and been get a some forced degree. lie that the easier giving your child the easier lie. I want to try. I want to give my child a life that was easier than mine. I think that there's somewhat a little bit of a nugget of truth in there. But what I think you should do is put your kids in situations where they're always forced to grow and fight out of it with your assistance, with your teaching. You to where you, it isn't a, just a free ride for them because if they have no work ethic, if they have no uh, if they don't understand all the hard work that goes into everything, they're never going to be get fighting it. for 15. no one's going to get it. D D They'll be fighting for 15. For 15. They'll like be understanding that labor has no value except for to the individual paying for it. Sounds like Dave's uh, advocating for like kids to be out there with like, you know, go catch your dinner. You don't catch dinner. You're not eating. <laughs> This is the way world the world works. Yes. <laughs> no, Dave. We're not yes. going that far. But no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, and that's what I've tried to do. I try so to bring back that semi Spartan lifestyle. Well, I try. I, you know, well, I'm not again. If I'm the not, child is deformed, throw it from the cliff. <laughs> can we get only no, the strong no, shall survive? Come on. No, no. Come on. <laughs> so they can. Wow. No, come on. So intellect has value. Not no, they, Andre just on. invoked Godwin's law without even mentioning Hitler. <laughs> wow. Nice. Well, on he, that he note, invoked Leonidas law. <laughs> kick him into the pit. Exactly. Well, on that note, we probably well, should be wrapping up. But uh, Merrick, okay, go, go, go yeah. right ahead, man. Fin finish. You finish off first. So, uh, what do you got? What, what do you got to say? Well, no, I was just, I was just thinking about, you know, what is the, the, as you guys say, the redemption. Um, you know, as a parent of, uh, you know, and a guy who's been through a lot of business, and and a guy who's had kids for a long time, going on uh, twenty five years now. 
You've been having kids consistently for 25 years? Holy shit, man. No wonder you're like <laughs> No, so tired. not con- not consistently. <laughs> well, not not that I would not that I would claim, but oh, jeez. Um uh, yeah. I see. I'm oh, sorry, you see on. what finish, I did there. Finish your thought. <laughs> finish your thought. Um I, I think that, that these conversations are worth having in in the scope that we're having them. That how far are we willing to push it? Because the bottom line, when we really think of it, is that we are going to have to push the limits if what we're wanting for our kids is better than what we had. We have to push those limits. And that becomes dangerous territory. So what we need to do is become very comfortable in living inside that paradigm of kind of working in in that gray area outside the law, inside the law. We don't, you know, we're kind of doing the dance, but we just have to have the stones to be able to do it and not be afraid of it. So... I, I don't I don't know if that sounded a little bit disconnected, but as a parent, to me, that every day when I wake up, that's the way that I feel. Yep, it's well said. Well said, man. Uh, Dave, Andre, anything else before we close Thank out? Thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, well, I did want to say, um, t- you know, touching on what we've been talking about this entire time, because it went from entrepreneurship into you know well, how we how we prepare our children for the future. Um, right. I've always viewed this like since I've come to, you know, hmm. and you know, uh, to the principled stance and anarchy. It's always been about the future, like the world that I leave for my children and the world that I leave for my grandchildren and their children and successive generations. Because the, the, the world that I have, whatever I manage to do with it. I may get to enjoy some of those benefits, but they're they're going to be amplified significantly for successive generations. It's it's really not so much about me as it is about what my kids are going to get. So it's you know, it's like you said, Merrick. What what do we pass on to our kids? And I think I've mentioned this before to a, a couple of other people. Um, but as I tick off my to do list in life, you know, as I as I go through and experience the things that I I feel I. I have to see to completion, like, you know, for example, having a child and then seeing that child grow and raising that child to be a good person, a good human being who's principled and has a, a good moral foundation. As things get ticked off, I have less of a concern for the rest of my personal life. And once, like, and I had meant to say this, but once Kate is self sufficient, I mean, Yes, my 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 overall goal of becoming a grandfather is going to be there, and that's one of those things I need to check off. But once she's self sufficient, my concern for providing for her is going to be diminished significantly, which means that my uh, level of tolerate tolerated risk will increase. So it's like you were saying, Jeremy, you'll put sticking your neck out so your kids don't have to. That's exactly my thinking as well. I just need to. I just want to get there first. So that way I, I am less concerned with how her life is going to be affected by my actions and more concerned about what I can do to provide an example for her in action and so that she can follow it as an adult. Once she has these principal positions and once she has this moral foundation and ethical framework. So that's, that was my two cents mm, here, here. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> Dave. Yeah. Well, I, I second that emotion. Yeah. And uh, um, the only the only final statement that I'll make, and then I'll I'll shut up. I promise, is no, that I'm really honored to to have people like you as friends who are able really? to take on really yeah no really to take on really hard topics like this and make a moral stand on it, just like what Andre just said. That yes, I will fall on that sword. If it means that my children can have a better future, wow! You know that's uh, it. It maybe to guys like you, Dave and and Jeremy, that's not a big deal. But to most people, they'd be like, "What the fuck is that?" You know, <laughs> this guy's going off the rails here. 
No, seriously. For <laughs> no. people who, who are saying that, for people who are saying that I will literally take it in the chest just for the sake of my kids, uh, you got to appreciate that. And just having you guys as friends, you know, and, and you guys being legit about it, I really appreciate that. So thanks. Well, well we, they, they we don't understand you. that f- that family and and that blood is really what matters. This yeah. this society, all of this, this democracy. Family, yes, blood. No, I would agree with that. All all of this is this doesn't matter. This is a this is forced interaction. This is forced relationships. These are all a farce. Uh, okay. <laughs> Every, every, everything's a farce to Dave. Um, but all right. <laughs> um, well, yeah, Merrick. Th- uh, well, it is. Yeah, I know. Th- uh, thanks for coming on, Merrick. This, this, this was a great conversation. Um, glad, uh, glad to have you on and have you be a part of it. And uh, yeah, I'm very th- happy to be here. I think Thank you. You know, I think you're right. I think this. I mean, this is this is a conversation we could have had just off the air as the four of us. But uh, you know, it's. I think it's good to get out there and get people thinking about. You know, maybe, maybe there are more things they can do to take. You know, just a little bit more risk. And you know, especially especially if you have kids or if you're thinking of having kids. You know, be smart. But you don't gotta. You don't. You don't gotta. You don't gotta shut yourself down and say, "Well, I have this responsibility, so I can't do anything." You can get creative. Believe me. <laughs> I've been doing it. No, for I've years. seen I, you get I, creative. I've been doing it for. Me, I've been doing it for years. <laughs> so it is possible. But <laughs> all right, I, I'll give someone a quick business idea if they want to. If they, if you're like, oh, I don't know how to make money. Uh, you can go panhandle. If you're dead broke, you have zero dollars to your name, and you don't have a drug habit. If you have a drug habit, kick it. Start panhandling, saving all that money up that Can't you can. Can't do that this everywhere either. If you don't even have a house. Can't do that everywhere right? either, Dave. It's illegal to panhandle in a lot of places. Uh. <laughs> well, you could, you could, all right. You could ask fa- every family member for as much money as they will give you, and you could start. At, I asked a guy the other day who was run- at a farmer's market who was running a, uh, fr- uh, what are those things? Uh, uh, the fried, it's the fried dough with all the the powdered sugar on top of funnel, funnel cakes. cakes. Funnel cakes. He was making uh, funnel I cakes. Funnel cakes. I was asking him how much a week he was just. I was just like, hey, just wondering how much a week are you doing? Thirty two hundred dollars a week. All right. This guy, he said, Hi, oh, damn. my startup. He said, "My startup was, oh, my startup was, oh, his startup was only two hundred dollars, and all God he has to damn, do is go that's return on investment. Jesus. So if if you want if you want if you want free money, uh, I think you I, could I think even I make it more money doing. by going by organically processed all of that and then making organic funnel funnel cakes." You could they charge a markup and probably they, make ten percent more, fifteen percent more. They won't be. Is. They won't be nearly as good, and and most people aren't going to want to eat them because most people eat funnel cakes specifically because they are disgustingly um, bad for you. They're it's they're so fucking, fucking terrible good. for you, and that makes them delicious. Exactly. So, but I, I that, that's I mean that's a great point though, Dave. I think uh, my only issue with that is I would probably eat all the goddamn funnel cakes because I love them so much. But uh, other than that, I you know <laughs> I, I might I, I might look into it's something. It's too like easy. That. I'm sure you could find out how to make prepare. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, oh, all on YouTube. Of course. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, and, and, just uh, rake in the cash, well, save that, that capital, and start your your business that you need to start. That's that's another and good this. that's another good point to wrap this all up on. Is go back to the entrepreneurial stuff. Yeah, as, you know, I tell people all the time: if you have a skill, whatever, you have a product or a service that you could provide, even if you started off as a hobby at first, just get it out there. But even if you don't, for people who say I don't know how to do anything, you can find out how to do just about anything on YouTube, and if you're creative enough you can find just about anything on youtube and figure out a way to make money at that so you know absolutely i literally learned how to farm on youtube exactly I, I, I'm, I'm i'm learning and, right and i'm learning right behind i bought i'm learning right behind you so i i totally i totally i, I understand that so all right yeah. well let's get i watch cat videos that's that's effective too, Andre. Let's let's get wrapping up. <laughs> Merrick watches Hickok forty five. That's thanks. about it. Uh, I thanks. watched him last night. All right. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks again for coming on, Merrick. Uh, good talk, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. This, I really appreciate it. it I'm sorry pleasure. for the rant. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This this has been the season. Of it's always such a great time to be on with you guys. I mean, you just you're having such a good time. You forget that you're doing a podcast and yeah. you, you're just talking to each other and and then i get yeah we're trying to suspend the uh 
that's where I get lost. For... <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Before before anybody <laughs> else keeps going, let me get this out. All right. This has been <laughs> the Seeds of Liberty podcast. <laughs> All of our information can now be found at our new website, solpodcast.org. Thanks again to our buddy Paul Gordon for making that happen for us. And our Patreon is still up and running. I promise that that extra episode I told you I had sitting in the can will be out uh, within a week. I, I will definitely get that out there. Um, and please consider checking our, our stuff out there and tossing us a few shekels uh, because, uh, well, hey, we uh, somebody's going to keep the lights on around here. But all right. So thanks again, everybody, for listening. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Word. Peace. Peace. Seeds of liberty, 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 Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at Get Cell. Cell411.com. That's getcell411.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation, and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT No Gov License allows use or modification of any product, service, or software, except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.